Well, hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. And we're doing the continuing series of grading each team's general managers, which we're going to get at right away. We did from Anaheim to Montreal in our last video, and we're going to do the rest in this video. This was all compiled in my live stream, which you see the NHL Pearl of Wisdom show. If you follow this channel, you get to be part of the live stream and you can put your vote in or your grade in for all of these things that we're doing. Actually, the next series we're going to do is players that are that most likely will be traded from each NHL team. And you can be part of that too. Tell me who you think you want traded or whatever for your team or other teams or what have you. As part of the live broadcast, we would love to have you. It's it's a lot of frolic. We do little perlo dances like that. You want to know more about that? Give me a follow. Give me a sub. Hit the like. And uh, you can do that. Uh, Steel Flyers All Sports Network as well. Uh, www.steelflyers.com. Do you like all four major sports and the teams they're in? If you do, you'll like that. So I would go there. Okay, let's get to it. General managers from every team. Starting with the Nashville Predators. The grade. We're giving grades to the general managers from every team. Uh, so we start with uh, Nashville Predators. Tough grade. Tough grade. What do you do with this team? Uh you could, they, I hear they're going to sign uh, at Matthias Ekholm at 31 years old. Does that mean they're not rebuilding? To me, so far, Poyle, who is the general manager of the Nashville Predators, has built a team that is going to just barely miss the playoffs or barely make the playoffs every single year, get a draft pick in the middle rounds, and basically be mediocre like, like the Minnesota Wild for, have been for a while. The uh, acquiring of Matt Duchesne was a big failure. Uh, right back to when they traded Seth Jones to Joe Han for Joe Hansen, I was not a fan of that deal back then. As it turns out, it was correct. And then, you know, right after that, giving him an eight million dollar contract per year, which is still going to be there until 2025. Matt Duchesne's eight million per year is till 2026. This team is cap strapped because of poor contracts uh, and uh, really is a very nondescript team. Uh, we did, Hines, I think, did very good to get very a good job of getting this team in the playoffs last year. But on paper, this team is very average. Um, besides a strong defense, he the trade of Ellis for Myers and Glass, we'll see how that turns out. It looks like maybe he might start getting younger here, but I don't know what direction they are going. Um, there has been some good drafting. Their the defense development group seems to bring in some, you know, players that come in seem to do very well. All of the players that are here, uh, Ellis when he was here, Roman Josie, uh, Dante Fabro is looking really good. Um, they drafted and developed defensemen very well, so you got to give them a, a decent mark for that. But overall, this team is way too average, and I don't know what direction they're going. So I we we gave them uh, the the community gave them a C. I gave them a C minus, and I, I think that's very generous to tell you the honest truth. They do have some guys coming up, some players coming up that look like they could be decent. Uh, but nothing spectacular. And that's the thing with the Nashville Predators. That would be the adjective I would use. Nothing spectacular. Very average. Uh, the New Jersey Devils. Uh, and uh, Fitzgerald. Uh, I have, Let's just put it, get it right out there. Big A. A minus for the community. I, think, I don't think he's made a mistake. Uh, hardly since he's come in, um, acquiring Yanni Kukinen from Carolina, uh, uh, the drafting of Jack Hughes, Igor Sher drafting of uh, Sharon Govich. I'm not sure if he was actually there for that draft, actually. 
No, he wasn't. So I can't really give him for that one. But in the offseason this year, getting Dougie Hamilton, now that is a lot of money. We're going to have to see if that pans out. But he was a Norse candidate three years running. So you can't really blame them for giving them that kind of money with the defense that they had there. They needed to bolster this defense. And acquiring Adam Gray, or Ryan Graves, Adam Graves. Yeah, Adam Graves, I think he's a tad bit retired. No, just a tad. Uh, Ryan Graves was a fantastic move, plucking him for not really not giving up all, all that much at all. He improved this defense immensely. And then the acquisition of Jonathan Bernier, I think was fantastic. I think Carolina was crazy to let him go. Uh, I don't know if you guys were watching the Detroit Red Wings last year, but Bernier was stopping pucks like nobody's freaking business for them. They had no business winning a lot of the games that they, if it wasn't for Bernier, they would have done nothing. And they've drafted very well. They've got a, a good pool of prospects coming up in Alexander Holtz. Uh, the pickup of Kevin Ball in the Hall trade is looking very good. Colton White. Um, there's probably more here. Actually, minors. I was in the minors. Dawson Mercer. They just picked up Chase Stillman. Shakir Makamadoulin. I like that pickup after Schneider, uh, Rangers stole Schneider from them in that draft. I think he's done fantastic. I, like I said, uh, I gave him a big A. I, um, every move he's done, maybe the Thomas Tatar, I'm a little, eh, but we'll see how he turns out there. Wasn't really sure about the Thomas Tatar pickup. Uh, he was kind of meh in Montreal. Maybe he'll change things up a little bit here in New Jersey, but good marks for Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, New York Islanders and Lamorello, um, I was surprised actually about the the uh, community. What the community gave Lamorello here? Uh, no, sorry. What it was an a, they gave him an A. Yeah, right. Okay, this was it was somebody else. They gave him an A. Um, hard to say anything bad about Lamorello since they took over. I mean, they made it to the semifinals twice after losing Tavares. Um, he signed. He, he took a gamble kind of contract with Pajot at $5 million a year. And he's looked really good there. Um, the biggest thing in, in talking on the Facebook groups that I've talked to, uh, I, which I do a lot, um, they're really not happy with the fact that they don't have a shoot first guy on the island and they haven't for a while. And he hasn't did anything to change that yet. Now there is talk about the Islanders being in on somebody like Tarasenko, but it hasn't happened yet. And I will have to agree that it is one of the things that is holding them back. But the signing of Semyon Varlamov at first didn't look great, but it's turned out really good. Uh, getting veterans like Green for virtually nothing and just adding really nice pieces all through the lineup. Um I thought he's he's done very well. I didn't give him an A myself. I gave him a B plus uh, because, like everybody says, I, they really do need a score, and he hasn't been able to accomplish that as of yet. But overall, I think he's done very well there on the island. Um, New York Rangers and Drury, it's pretty tough to assess what Drury has done so far since he only took over halfway through the season. Um but he did make some moves. He picked up Samuel Blay. He traded uh, Buknevich away, who they probably weren't going to sign. Um, they had Vitelli Kratzoff there. They decided to go a little younger and a little cheaper with Kratzoff instead of keeping Buknevich there. There always seemed to be a little something-something going on with the coach and Buknevich. Both coaches, Quinn, or Quinn and before Quinn. Can't remember who it was. Why can't I remember that off the top of my head? Anyways, uh, but it was between him and Quinn. There always seemed to be something there, and they decided to move on from him, grabbing Blay in a second. The you know a big question mark with the Barkley Goudreau pickup at three and a half million for what four years? 
no, till 2027, sorry. That's a lot more than four years. Five years, six years. Um, that's a long contract for a third and fourth liner, and I've heard a lot of boos on that. But guys like Barkley Goudreau are guys you need going into the playoffs. And Tampa Bay gave up a first for him, man, right? Um, if, if they could have afforded to sign him to that contract, I bet you they would have signed him to that contract. So teams generally have got real, come to realize that these guys are very important come playoff time. Look at the Montreal Canadiens with a lot of their guys that um, with Perry and and they also Tampa Bay with Maroon. Um, they brought in those guys. They paid a heavy price for them for a reason, and uh, they turned out. And then of course they got Reeves. They gave up quite a bit for a guy who generally hasn't been playing a lot as of late. Those moves are going to be interesting to see, but I think they're bold and. Uh, I'm not giving them too much of a minus for that. Well, it's almost like a wait and see type thing, but I have a feeling that they will pan out. Um, I gave Drury a B and the community gave them a B minus. Next. Ottawa Senators and uh, Dorian. Uh, all over the place with this. There was people that had them as high as a uh, had an A and I heard D minuses. Um, I had uh, the the community had a C plus. I had a B plus. I think the drafting has been really good. You got Batherson, Norris. Uh, you know maybe Colin White not the hasn't panned out that well. Shane Pinto looks fantastic. Uh, their drafting of defensemen has been really good. Uh, and signing like Zub to an ELC. Uh, getting getting Bradstrom in the in the Stone trade, uh, Thomas Shabbat, of course, fantastic. Um, I would have been higher than a B if it wasn't for the signing of Matt Murray. That really could hurt them. That needs to turn around. And since it hasn't yet, it could be devastating for this organization as far as uh, a team that needs cap space and uh, because they don't generally spend to the cap. Having a goaltender at $6 million a year forever, well, to 2024, can be pretty tough. So I gave it a B. Um, they still got like Sanderson coming up. They got a whole lot of prospects. I think they're building very well. They've made some mistakes. Uh, Dorian has made some mistakes, like with the Duchesne trade. Um, he made, went acquiring Duchesne, but then did well with Deshane being traded, uh, got some pretty good assets from uh, Carlson. I never liked the stone move, but at the time, they they really rebuilt this team with everybody on the same page. Uh, stone was older, probably was going to want a crap load of money. Just the timing didn't work well for Stone. And they brought some pretty good pieces back in all of those moves. So I gave him a B. Community gave him a C plus, And I think that's just uh, performance related. Um, they haven't really hit their stride yet. I don't see that. I don't really like to put that into my judgment as what a general manager does. They're improving every year. They look great in the second half. The team looks like it's shaping up well. I gave him a good mark. Uh the Philadelphia Flyers with Chuck Fletcher. And this was another one that was all over the place. Uh, and I had a really tough time giving a grade on this because I love the Ellis move. I loved it. Uh, they, they needed a veteran right away. Ellis is certainly that. He's not what he was before the injury. And if you talk to Nashville fans, that's why they're okay with the deal. Because he just never came back and was as good as he was before the injury. He's still very good, but yeah, he's not. He hasn't been that pop out, eye pop out good that he was before the injury. Um, but I thought it was a decent pickup for Myers. Uh, could backfire because Nashville is really good at developing defensemen. Myers can end up looking pretty darn good. But I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't bemoan the trade. Provorov needed a veteran beside him, 
and uh, after Niskanen retired, and he and Chuck Fletcher went out and got him. Rasmus Ristolainen, this is the biggest question mark for me. That guy is all over the place. He hasn't learned the position very well in Buffalo. Not necessarily his fault. Doesn't matter if it's his fault. The question is, can he hear now in Philadelphia at 26 years old? Or is that development just done and this is what you're going to get? In which case, he's a bottom, he's a 5'6 guy at Four and a half million dollars, and he's got to, and he's going to be going into uh, his. Uh, he's going. He's. They're going to have to give him a qualifying offer. Is what I'm trying to spit out here. Uh, at four and a half million dollars, they gave up a lot. A lot. First, a second, Hag, a crap load for a guy who could end up being there only for one year. You know, if they happen to re-sign him even one more year. And I don't know. I'm going to assume Chuck Fletcher knows what he's doing. But on the surface, I don't like that move. Uh, picking up Yandel for 900000 was a nice move. It's like one step forward, two steps back. Martin Jones, the guy's been poopy forever. And I know they have a goaltender coach that worked with him when he was younger. But uh, I'm still not convinced he's that bad. I don't know who else they could get, but I, I would rather have Anderson from Buffalo, to tell you the honest truth, to work with Carter Hart. We'll see how it turns out. It, I was up and down, up and down, up and down. I gave We gave um, him a C. Sorry, the community gave a C plus. I gave him a C for the work he's done right now. I hope I'm wrong. I'm a Philadelphia Flyers fan, but... Oh, and then, of course, I can't, I got to talk about the Atkinson for Borachek. I did like that move. I should give it a plus because I like that move. Uh, Atkinson is a score-first guy. The fact that he hasn't did well in Columbus the last two years, it's just been a very difficult environment there, and he's coming to a whole new environment. I think he'll bring back his, at least 25 to 30 goal seasons again. Uh, so I like that move. Borachek is a passer. This was worth whatever risk there was because scores are hard to find. I liked that move. So next Pittsburgh Penguins and Hextall. Hextall, we, we just didn't see enough of what he's doing here with this lineup. Uh, you know, getting Jeff Carter was okay. I mean, he worked out really well, but where is this team going? I want to see where this team going. Until I see a um, until I see movement towards a rebuild, which is desperately needed here, um, I can't give up any anybody more than a C. It's a wait and see for the Penguins. Uh, this team needs to be rebuilt. Period. Stop fooling around, holding on to these guys. You know, plucking your heartstrings. If we had all the, you know, it, it's time to go, guys. Just get over it. Okay. Next, uh, San Jose Sharks. Uh, I, I think I'm going to get crushed here by uh, the community, uh, by the Sharks community. Or Wilson, we gave him a D. And it's unfortunate because he did a lot of great things before all this went down with Kane and uh, the way he handled the situation. From what I understand, I've been talking to San Jose Sharks fan. I thought it was more of an ownership thing, like something was going on there where they were not doing anything about Kane's. Kane was doing things that were against team rules, and nobody was doing anything about it. I thought maybe ownership and management were telling them, you know, like just leave him alone, let him go on the ice, uh, and stuff like that. We can't afford to trade him or something. But apparently. From what I've talked to, it it was really all uh, about Bugner letting him do that. I, I don't know. The fact of the matter is the manager has got to do something to get that situation resolved before it got to a head like this. And nothing was done, and it looks really bad for San Jose. You got terrible contracts with Eric Carlson. That was the other thing. I thought that was an ownership deal. 
uh, that they said to sign Eric Carlson and he didn't want to. I still believe that, but I'm hearing like, well, man, ownership wouldn't get involved like that. They got to sell tickets. Eric Carlson was a big name. I don't, I still, I still can't pin that on Wilson um, myself, but the fact is it's a terrible contract. He's a manager. You got to judge him on it. It's bad. Uh, Brent Burns. And then of course, Mark Edward Blaschick, all these contracts are terrible. If you were going to do that, they might as well just wrote out Pavelski and all of those guys. And, you know, it's a mishmash of who knows what's going on there. The pickup of Aiden Hill after losing Jones, I don't know. I mean, he looked okay in Arizona. It could turn out. Obviously, they're talking to their goalie coaches. One of them is a, goal, the, a goaltender whisperer in the Bokoff, apparently. Uh, who must have saw some huge things in him. He's a big guy, six foot six, two oh two. He could turn out fantastic. Not really gonna put much of a judge on that. He didn't do bad in Arizona. But James Reimer, well past, like he is just not very good. So we gave him uh a D, both of us. Community and I gave him a D. Next. Uh, Seattle, uh, again, very tough to say here what to give him a, uh, a, a mark or a, a grading because Francis really hasn't did all that much here. But the community gave him a B minus. I gave him a C because he didn't really do anything. He just grabbed some players. I think now that I've looked at it, though, I have a feeling that a lot of the players they grab, they're guys that they can trade for draft picks at the deadline. Eberle, Will probably, Wenberg, Donskoy, uh, Vince Dunn, maybe Carson Soucy. Just these were, if we're not in the playoffs, and I don't think they will be, trade those guys and we'll grab some free agents and just keep on building with draft picks. I think that's what Seattle was doing here. If they do, if they are doing that, then I'll give them a higher grade because that's how you build a dynasty. Unlike Vegas, where you just go on fire and then flame out hard, which I think is very likely going to happen in Vegas. This is a way to build yourself. Like say Stevie Eisenman does is in Detroit where you will have a dynasty for years and years and years if they do that. So that's why I gave him a C. I want to see if he's doing that. It appears that's what he's doing. See, I, the, uh, the community gave him a B-, minus, giving him a lot of props for picking up a solid defense, really. Jordan, uh, Giordano, Alexiak, Larson, Susie, pretty solid defense there. Also signing Philip Grubauer. Uh, gives you a goaltender you can build a system around, whether you are wanting to... Um, build to the draft or not having a good goaltender to build is necessary to build a system around. So that was the reasons for that. Next, St. Louis Blues, um, Armstrong. I, I, I think it's kind of failed him uh, now, but they won a cup. They won a cup. They built a team. They won a cup. It's just since the cup. It's been grasping at straws, keeping this team competitive, where I think it's just now got to be the point where it's time to rebuild. I think they'll figure it out this year and do so. But until I see that, I'm giving them a C. Uh, they actually gave, the community gave them a C-. minus. I, I didn't understand Tory Krug or Falk or except for the fact that they probably still have value that you can get picks for them now. So they sort of they sort of went, let's just see how good this team can be if we grab a couple pieces. We don't want to give Peter Angelo a huge, big contract and then not be able to use him for assets somewhere down the road with the no movement clause. And they might even have been helping out Peter Angelo because it was more than likely this was going to hit rebuild mode. And it gave him an opportunity to be in a competitive team for the rest of his career. So um, I could be wrong here, but that's where I think they're going. And if they are, then I'll give them a higher grade because I think it's time. Uh, tell me what you guys think, St. Louis fans, if it's time or not. And the community did as well. Uh, giving them a C minus. You know, I now the more I talk about this, maybe the grade is unfair. 
because it looks like he's setting himself up for a rebuild. Even getting Brandon Sad, Brandon Sod, um, he's a guy that it has value and can be traded. There's no no movement clause or anything like that, so I don't believe so. Anyways, was there? Let me check. Whoops. Uh, there's a no trade clause. Okay, so maybe there is. But it looks like they're setting themselves up for a rebuild. Next. Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, what can you say? Brisebois, has he made a bad move? Uh, even if you think that the Kucherov thing was a little dicey, still was a move that was successful in winning two cups. So uh, you really, I don't think he's made too many bad moves in the whole, his whole tenure there. I've given him an A+. Plus, um, and the community gave him an A. I'm not sure where that comes from. Maybe because the team maybe on paper isn't as good as it was last year. I think it's almost as good as it was last year. I thought he did a really good job of balancing things all out and, uh, you know, recouping the damages with guys like Edward Balamar coming in. You got Perry who showed the value in the playoffs last year uh, coming in to replace the, you know, yeah, and you've got very young players that was drafted that were drafted by uh, Joseph and uh, Colton Ross being able to take the spots of Goudreau and Coleman. And then you bring two other pieces to have with a lot of experience, playoff experience. I, I like, I, I don't see how he did anything wrong. I gave him an A plus. Uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Um, all over the board here. But as it turns out, there was some Fs. I think that's a little unfair for Dubas. Um, it would have been interesting to see what would happen if COVID didn't hit. It, there was no team that was affected more than the Maple Leafs with COVID because if they had that cap space, this lineup might have looked a little better. Um, there was a lot of th – there's things that I thought Dubas did. I like Jake. The Jake Muzzin move, uh, Morgan Riley, uh, was it was a good move. I didn't like Thornton, but he was just throwing things out there. And actually, considering he had to go like bargain basement contracts, I think he made some pretty good uh, low risk, high reward, medium risk, high reward plays here. Getting Nick Ritchie, who ended up putting up some decent offense last year in Boston. Uh, and uh, I love the pickup of Michael Bunting. Uh, he did. He came out last year at 25 years old as a late bloomer, and I even think they might even try him on the top line. Um, those were nice little moves that he made. Um, the biggest thing for me and what knocked him down a lot, though, is the Morazic pickup. I'm just not a Morazic fan. Maybe they know something I don't, but... I know we put up good numbers in Carolina, but I'll tell you right now, there's not too many goaltenders that won't. And when you see what Nedeljkovic puts up in Detroit, it's not going to be what Bernier did, I'll tell you that. that that's a, my take. Watch. He will not put up Bernier numbers in Detroit. So I, I'm not a Mrazic fan. I think that's going to hold them back. And it was mostly because of that. Not because of all the other things that you know, and the fact that I still never liked him picking up Tavares in the first place. But he had a plan. It was thwarted by COVID, and you can't deny that. So it's not an F. I gave him a D, and so did the community give him give him a D. Uh, my D was for getting Morazic, though. It would have been higher if it wasn't for Morazic. They needed a better goaltender like that. I would have been all over Flurry. Although, you know, cap space, that's a problem. But somebody better than Morazic, you might as well have just stuck with Campbell. Next, Vancouver Canucks, uh, Benning. The guy drafts great. His drafting record is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Bo Horvat, that wasn't him actually, but uh, that's right, Bo Horvat wasn't him. Um, Elias Pettersson, T Quinn Hughes, 
Nils, o Nils Hoagland, Brock Besser. This, this team was built through the draft, but his signings, like Tyler Myers, six million was terrible. Uh, the Oliver Ekman Larson deal could end up looking really bad as well, as he didn't really have great years in Arizona the last two years. Although Connor Garland might change that. He put up some damn good points last year. The thing was, and I was talking to Arizona people there on Facebook and uh, reading a lot of stuff, Connor Garland did start to wear down over the season. He's not a big guy, but I still think it was a decent move to go for it. They it, it, Giving up the first next year was tough. Or was it this year? This year or whatever. It was tough. I didn't mind the move. I'm just a little concerned about Larson. Something in me tells me he's going to have new life here. I hope I'm right. But if he doesn't, eat. this could look really bad. Also, drafting uh, our uh, Thatcher Demko is fantastic as well. So I gave Benning a C-. minus. The community gave him a D. And that's mostly just because of bad contracts. Um, Brandon Sutter's contract before this was terrible. Um, I did like the Jason Dickinson move. It's like up and down, up and down. Something really good, something really bad. Tucker Pullman, why? Why Tucker Pullman? The defense has not very good. Next, Vegas and uh, McCrimmon. McCr uh, B minus. Yeah, Kelly McCrimmon. B minus by the community, B for me. Uh, I th I've been talking to Vegas uh, fans and stuff, and they're all over the place. I've seen it D minus. Sorry about that. I wanted to go here. There we go. I've seen uh, D minus. I've seen A's. Um, one thing you got to say, I mean, the guy picks up what he needs. They're bold. They go out and do grab whatever they feel that they need to become better. But they still need a, a first-line center, and they haven't grabbed it yet. Uh, that's why I pretty much gave him a B. The whole roster in general has been well put together. Matthias Janmark last year and the signing of him this year is great. Patrick Nolan, eh, wow, uh, that's a big risk. Uh, and, and the Evgeny Dadanoff movie, I don't know what that's all about. But overall, this team is pretty deep And uh, w as far as what's on paper. Now, if there's injuries and guys have to come in to replace these guys, it gets a pretty it gets pretty iffy. But for what, he's, what he had to work, what Rick Krimen has had to work with, which is basically not many picks, uh, just grabbing guys from different organizations and putting them together. I got to give them a beat. They did go to a cup final. Um, they have made the playoffs every year. How do you not give them a B? The community gave them a B minus. Uh, Washington Capitals, McClellan, it's a C. It's such a nondescript team now. It's just getting old. It doesn't seem to be good enough. It's just good enough to make the playoffs, not good enough to to win. And it'll be like that for quite some time. Um, I gave him a C because there might not be much he could do about it. I don't know if his idea was to keep Ovechkin and Backstrom or maybe move on and start rebuilding here. But honestly, I think they need to really, really rebuild, but they're not going to. So, C. Uh, oh, excuse me. And the Winnipeg Jets and Shovel Day Off. Um, he, it's tough being a general manager in Winnipeg. There's a, you, you see Lion A wanted out. Uh, Truba wanted out. He wanted to go to a bigger city. Winnipeg is someplace that you got to you got to love the grassroots type living to like Winnipeg. It's a grassroots place. It's a heart, farm in town, all of those sort of things like that. It's cold in the winter, yes. But the people are awesome, uh, very kind, uh, great place to raise a family. 
and all of those sort of things like that. But if you're looking for excitement and, you know, like say Trubo went to New York, if you're looking for that, Winnipeg ain't it. So it's a little difficult to get people to go there. And I think overall, Shevel Dayoff has done well considering. He has been very patient and he hasn't given up too much of their future to be able to acquire players. I'm concerned about the Nate Schmidt pickup. I really am. But Paul Maurice seems to do really well. Whenever they brought defensemen in, Pionk, Dylan DeMello, uh, and uh, even they, they drafted Logan Stanley. They're improving every year, and they have career years. So I'm going to give him credit for this one. It's a very interesting pickup. I think Brendan Dillon may, be, may have a career year with Paul Maurice. And Shovel Day Up is the one that hired Paul Maurice. I give him big props for that because he's a fantastic coach. Overall, the rest of the roster has been built fantastic. It's deep. You got um, all the way through. That's all you can ask for a general manager, especially in a small market place like Winnipeg. That's another thing, high taxes, all of that. They have a lot of things working against them there, but he has managed to put together a pretty solid team every single year. That's my full 42. That's all we have to give here today. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a Perlo dance and hit the subscribe and the bell so you can come over into our live streams and be part of this interaction as we make videos together, build this channel together, and have a lot of fun doing it. I'll send you a My NHL Pearls of Wisdom necklace, Perlocopter, to your door. Also, as we grow, I'm going to get myself a Jet O Frolic, and you'll know what all of these things are when you go on my live stream. And I'm going to come to all the lands. My bucket list is to go to every arena. But more than that, take as many people with me as I can and Perlo dance the whole way. This is just what we call frolic here. You can't do this and not be happy. And if happy ain't cool, then I ain't cool. Okay, bye.